Hello, everybody. Welcome to another special episode of Carlton People. And this one is done uh, by popular demand. We've, uh, we've <laughs> waited. We've, Rocco, we've, we've come into contact with each other so randomly. And it's like, it's like I've known you my whole life. Welcome to Carlton People. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Really enjoyed it. And it's a pleasure, man, talking to you. And it's like a bit of an honour to be one of the Carlton people, huh? <laughs> well, the, look, the idea is to get as many of them as possible. But, yeah. It's been good, man. No, it's, it's been good. It's been good watching. And it's good to see, like, you know, all the different types of Carlton supporters. Man, there's a lot of us out there, you know. So it's been good. It's been good, yeah. yeah. No, it has. It sure has, mate. Well, why don't we kick things off? Talk to me about now. You've seen you've seen a lot of Carlton in your life. So, where did it begin for you? How did you become a, a Carlton fan? Man, it's simple. Like when I, I I used to live in Fitzroy, and we used to live right across the ground from the old Fitzroy ground. You know, like pretty much right across. And you know, the first thing I really remember is the old man, mate. I'm Italian, you know? so the old man used to stand because we used to have like a single frontage house. You know, we used to stand at the front. Because every Saturday there were like six games, yeah, and they all played on the Saturday afternoon, and they used to park in front of his driveway. And he used to hate it, you know. So he used to stand out there and get out of here, you bastard! This is my driveway, you know. And me as a four-year-old, that's what I remember, you know, like the old man telling the bloody Australians in this sport, you know, he used to hate it, you know. But. Those days there, man, we used to just roam the street. I used to go and have a bit of a look at, at the ground. I used to kind of see a little bit of the, the Fitzroy and that, and I was almost going to be lying, you know, and then, you know, like I used to hang outside those days with, with you know, a few of the riffraff and that, and they just pretty much said to me, mate, you're, you're following the blues, you know, and I went, all right, and then that's it, man. I'm, I'm a blues ever since then, man, and that's how it started, you know. So... What was your what's your very first memory of Carlton, whether it's a game, training, something? All right. So the first game I went to, yeah, this is what I remember. The first game I went to, we were like 10 years old, right? When he gave my parents, those days there, man, like just me and me, mate, Jay, let's go to the footy. First time ever. We've never been anywhere. So that's it. We had like a few bucks in our pocket. We take off, we catch a trunk, we go to jogging mall. We're playing, it's a big game. I think I can't really tell you what it was. I think it was, like, it was a big game. It was either wrestling or Hollywood. And we jump on the train. Those days, it was like the red rap. Like, you know, we used to sit with our legs hanging out, you know, we're driving down. To, we're so excited. Ten years old, mate. Like these days, I don't even let my son out the driveway. He's 14, man. I've got to watch him. Those days, there, the old lady, just be home by the, you know, just be home by the lights, you know. And make sure you get. Get home when the lights turn on outside. Yeah, all right, cool. So we take off, we get off, and I walk and I see the concept. I see the MCD for the first time, man, and it was like, man, I don't know, I can't explain them as a 10-year-old. And then I, the one thing I do remember as we're walking up is they used to have, like, the, the reserves games too. And I heard the crowd from outside, man, and this thing, and here this is. Oh, it was just a sound, man. And I was walking up. I was like, I was, I was so shocked, you know. And then we walked in, and my mate, he was a little bit of a go-getter those days, you know. Always, I think he's successful now. And so I walk in, and I'm like, I'm just walking into the G. I'm wrapped, and he comes up to me. He goes, "Hey, mate, we got a job." And I said, "What are you talking about?" And he goes, "We got a job." I said, "What job?" I said. Hey, I can't do a job, man. Like my mum still makes my milk in the morning. I'm the, I can't. <laughs> he goes, you're gonna sell pies, you know. And I'm thinking, man, all right. So we go and see some dishonky bloke. He gives us like a, a thing full of like twenty pies, and we walk around. And the first thing I worked out is I can walk anywhere. So I go straight to that MCC, mate, and I sit in prime position. I think I'm sitting next to the prime minister. That's like there's a. I'm sitting there with these pies. I'm 10 years old. I'm eating all these pies. I ate about six, seven of them. Watch the whole game, right? Walk back at the end of the game. The bloke goes, where have you been? And I go, oh, I've been trying to sell pies. So I'll give him back like 12 cold pies. I've eaten eight of them. I owe him money, right? He just kicks me up the yard. He goes, get out of here, mate. So that's it. That's my first experience, man. Got a job, lost it, and watched the blues. You know, that was my first experience at the journey, yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, you're right. There's a, you, you know, when you, when you talk about hearing the crowd outside the stadium, and uh, obviously, you know, 2020, we haven't been to any games, us here in Victoria, so we, we live for it anyway. So can you imagine what it's going to be like when we actually uncaged again? Oh, it's going to be, man, I'm, I'm telling you, I missed the heaps this year. I missed the heaps this year, man. Yeah. My first game, you know, like, and then that was a dream, but my first game at Princess Park was a few like, weeks later. Again, we just catch a train, train, it was like three hours to get there. You know, and I rock up at, oh, man, Princess Park. I love Princess Park, man. I went there until, like, I think it was 98 or 99 when they, like, and we used to have, like, seats there. But that first game as a kid, man, walked in, sat there, Stood there at the Healy stand and just watched, watched my blues, you know, for the first time. I think we played Hawthorne and we smashed it that day. It was like the best, man. And we used to have the Premiership quarter, man, third quarter. Premiership quarter, man. They used to, I tell you, they used to talk about it, but it was there, man. We used to come out the third quarter. We used to come out the side. And it was just beautiful. I remember that game. I think we kicked seven or eight goals in the third quarter. Just everyone cheering in the back. We were all confident. We were loving, man. You know, can't prove why like Mick Gatto was there, man. And this, it was, it was the best, mate. The eighties, I loved it, loved it, I loved so, it. I've, I've heard of it. Obviously, we, we know the generation that I've been born into and whatnot. So I've, I obviously lived through you, people like you, to tell me the stories of what it was like, right? And you know, there's a few things. There's the Premiership quarter. There's the expectation to win. There's the mighty Blues. Yeah, it was all true. It's true, man. What was it like? I, well, you just brought up into it, and I'm telling you, that winning feeling, it was just like we expected to win every every week, man. We had, And we had players those days. You've got to remember, man, we had these players, man. We had people like Hunter, Johnson. We had Bazasto come in. This bloke from West Australia taking goal of the year, mark of the year in, in one season, you know. And we had people like the Mosquito Fleet in the early 80s, you know, like people like Ashman and Marku and Harms and, and Capontio and, you know, like, and they, they used to dominate. These things, these players used to take a hold of the game, man, and they, it, it, was, it was a beautiful time, man. It was really, really good, man. We were successful. Um, yeah, what can I say, man? It, it was just a good time, man, in the 80s. Yeah. You know, I struggle at times to think about, you know, you know, when you're a supporter, we think about everything. And, you know, there's there's parts of me that say, you know, we've got to move away from old Carlton and we've got to adapt. And we sort of have done that with the way that we draft and build lists now, yeah. right? But part of me also says, well, you, you can't just forget about the past because these principles of winning and how it has to be that way, I don't know if we can just get – I don't think we can get rid of that because then we lose the identity of the club, right? That's it, and that's exactly right, man. That was the identity of the club, man. We were strong, like um, Italian club, you know, from Carlton, you know, like that was one thing too, you know. And um, as I said, man, we used to go out there and you were always confident. And, and, it was, and it was pretty much – one final at a time, you know. Like, if you miss that one year, you will back the next year, you know what I mean? And, and they used to do anything to win, you know, like getting players. I know there was the paper bag and all that, all those stories, but I don't care. I mean, like, people bag Ali, mate, but that bloke there, man, he loved it, man. It was all here, man. He did everything he did. Like, they could say whatever they want, mate, but he did everything. You know, it was all hard for him, man. He loved the side, man. He would do anything for that side, you know. Money was coming in everywhere. Yeah, we were arrogant. I loved it. I loved it. I loved being like that, man. It was the best, you know. And yeah, as I said, man, premiership after premiership. Like there was what eighty one, you know. The one I remember was eighty two. Now, why do I remember eighty two? Helen, Helen, Demichio, right? Remember this? You don't remember, man? There was a streaker. You've got to have seen the, the Oh, video. okay. Yes, I'm aware of the streaker. Right, right. And then the 12 years old, man, we there watching the footy, man, and this girl comes up. <laughs> right. For everything to be seen, man. And then, like, oh, my God, man, that got me through the next five years, just that, that image, you know, but. What I do remember over that, Bruce Dool, man, this is what the spirit of Karna was. Bruce Dool, man, he, she was trying to take his, uh, his headband. 
pushed him away. And then Johnson, man, the, the dominator, man, he could play final. He grabs her and he throws her out of the way. What are you doing here, mate? You're going to wreck everything. And, I look, and then I think these days, if that happened, you know, I reckon our players would try to get a number, you know, like, what are you doing, mate? Like, this is a final, mate. Get out of here. There was no interest, you know. But for me, the 82, man, that was like, that was, and then there was a few. Yeah, we were still competitive for the next few years, you know. And then we picked up some some fairly good players after that in 86, you know. Big sticks come down and, and Bradley and Motley. Motley had that that accident. I reckon he was better than, than um, like, Bradley at the time, you know. So that would have been nice. But we pick up sticks and rally in the 86, we lose. But, you know, they come back in the 87. And we, we had some tough players, man. David Reese jones man, that, that bloke there, man, he was like a stick, but he would. Man, he got reported more than anyone, man. And I remember they put him on, they put him on Derma Brennan. Derma Brennan was a gun, man. They bloke is a gun, man. And he tore him a new asshole that day, man. On 38 to 3, he day, man, and we won the grand final. So yeah, that was a big day too. Yeah. So So how 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 did you adjust? Well actually before I go there, who was was there one player that you always had a favorite sort of thing for? Or was it just because there were so many good ones you don't really have a favorite? It was so many, but we talking what? Like I've got many favorites. Like in the eighties and that like it, it there were so many, you know, like late 80s, the sticks comes along, man. He's like 20. I know he's a little bit older. I think he might have been like 21, 22 when he came over, you know. But um, then he comes over, he's he's just, he just, he just showed leadership, man. He, he was just a man, you know. He'd come on and he would demand the balls. I love sticks. You know, I loved Bradley, you know. But before that, it was like Bazasto. And I used to... When I was a kid, I used to wear Kenny Hunter's number, you know, number nine on me back, you know. I used to love him and he used to take these marks, you know. So, but there were so many of them, you know, and they were all big game players, you know. So, yeah, and then you get to the 90s and that, and again, you know, it all changed. You know, there's different players that I fell in love with, yeah. Right. So how how have you adjusted from the mighty era to the rebuild era, we'll call it? So what happens is, I think I've said this to you before, we're in this bubble here, yeah? We're in this bubble, and I've always believed, in sort of, I still believe we are world leaders. Like, I don't see what everyone else sees, you know? Like, I see that we, we're Carlton, man. We're still world but Yeah, we've had a bit of a bad drop, but we're, we're still world leaders, man. That's how I see the Blues, you know? But in reality, we're not. And this is why in the last, you know, like over the years, man, I've started to get angry and say, well, where are we going, mate? This is ridiculous, you know. But So the adjustment at the start was like, yeah, all right, no worries. We copped our whack. We move on, you know. But it's been hard over the last few years. I can't, like I'm almost, I'm not embarrassed on my side of course, man. I love the you know. I don't know, do you do this? Sometimes people go, who do you do this for? And you go, oh, the blues, you know. You kind of do it that way. And it's it's his instinct. You just go, oh, yeah, yeah, the blues. And they go, oh, yeah, they're doing all right. And then I'm thinking, like, this is no piss in my pocket, you know. Like, no. you make And as I said, man, we used to laugh at teams like St. Kilda and that. Ah, like, oh, the Saints, man, this shit, you know. You know, well, we are that team now and we've got to get out of it. But, you know, we're on the right track. Don't get me wrong. I think we are on the right track. So don't yeah. worry. Yeah. What about just, I mean, the way you've described going to the footy, watching the footy, experiencing the footy. I mean, 2020 probably fast-tracked where we were going anyway because of, you know, because of the pandemic and yep. we had to really become more digital than what we really were before. So how, how, have, you, how have you found the new experience to, you know, for footy? Like watching it and... Yeah, like just consuming it, yeah. Look, man, I'm old school, so it, it's really hard for me, it's, all these changes, you know, like even watching the footy, the way it's played, it's a little bit like, I find it a little bit hard, you know what I mean? But I'm not one of those people that say, oh, you know, like, they were the days, they were the best days. I still think footy now is fantastic, man. Like, really, if you look back in the in the 70s and 80s and watch some of them games, man, seriously, I reckon we could kick better than them, you know, like that. 
the, the skills weren't right up, but, but they were tough. They were good footballers. But now it's just gone to the next level. Like, I love it now. Um, yeah, the media and that, well, you know, like, no, I'm old school, man. I still like, like, you, you, when you told me about this, man, you saw how long it took me to just, how do I find you on Skype? What's Skype? You know, <laughs> we can write a letter to each other, you know, like, yeah, but, so, uh, yeah. You've um, now you've done well to adjust. I've got to say, uh, I um, I'm not sure how much, I'm not sure how w- when when you started, you know, watching the channel and getting involved. But obviously, we met. I feel like it was after round. I think it was round fifteen. I could be wrong. Um, yeah. We met. You come on. I've never met you, but you you just you just bring that that honest truth. So we know that it's coming from a place of love, you know? I love my side, just like all of us. And, and some people go to me, oh, but, you know, how can you say that about the side, you know? But being honest, man, like, I love my side, you know? Like, I love the Carmen football side, and I'm telling you, this is what we need to do. I can see it, because I can see that we used to have a real arrogance, man, and they wanted to win, and now I can't see that. they a lot of prima donnas, man. They're just running around. They're getting their paychecks. That's what I'm seeing. And that day that I, I rang you that first time, you know, I used to watch a show and all the good. And then my son's going to ring him up and go, no, I mean, what am I going to say to him, man? I'm just going to get upset, you know. And then he's going to be ring, ring, ring. And I go, all right, ring him up and I'll talk to him, you know. And then as soon as you come on, I just went, nah, fucking, this is bullshit, man. Rubbish, <laughs> man. Like, in the ears. It is. Some of those performances are rubbish. Right? So, and then, yeah, so that's how I got on. No, that's good. So you said you, you sort of, you, you think we're on the right track. Um, what, is, what, what, is, what is needed? Where are we at high level as a football club? Players, yeah. off-field, everything. What, what are you seeing? Definitely play. Like, we need some players. Like, I think we're going to be in a, We can talk about that. But also, what I think we need is... I think in life, and, in, and it's also in sport, man, it's all about confidence, right? It's all about that confidence and wanting and wanting something and wanting to win the blood. Like, we'll just talk footy, forget about life. But you, you've got to want to win that game, man. And, you know, like those little things when they carried on Gibbs and that, man, I'm still not happy about that. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not what it's about, man. You know what I mean? Like, you've got to want to win. You've got to want to. Go for the ball. You've got to want to be the one who you say, give me that ball and I'll win you the game. You know what I mean? And I don't see that. A lot of times they're like everyone's running around and everyone's waiting for someone else to do things. So I think an attitude change has to has to come. I think we're lacking some leaders. Yeah. But look, you look at people like, for example, let's say Richmond over the last few years, man, they, they, they've changed. Cochin changed his leadership. The way he went from, he was a little bit of a laugh stuff there, man. And all of a sudden, he's gone into this brute of a man, mate. Like, he's got no respect for his body. I don't know. But they say Fribs. Don't get me wrong, I love Fribs. But is he that person? Is he, is he that person? Who else is, who else is our leader? Like, I don't understand, man. Like, yeah, we've got leaders there. You say, oh, yeah, he's a bit of a leader. He's a little bit of a leader. Where's that sticks? Where's that sticks that goes, come on, let's go, mate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this home. I can't see that at the moment. Yeah. And how that change, you know? And then personnel. We need personnel. Like, at the end of the day, but don't get me wrong, I reckon we've got a good group. So even if you go from the back, you start with we doing Doc, you know, Doc. Then, then you're already starting, that's very good, and then, you, and then you fill up the others, you know, like with Liam Jones and all that, very nice, Williamson. Coming along good, you know. And then in the middle, you got Cribs and, and Walsh. You know, like, and then at the front, you're going to have, like, Kernel and McKay. Man, you can build a side with six players like that. They're our A, a graders. And then you've got all those other ones coming around. So we've got the nucleus, right? Now we have to see some leadership from these blokes, right, to take on the game. And then, you know, with this draft, this this year, I reckon we've got a you know big chance of picking up, but we've got to go hard this year, man. And it, it's looking all right, you know. If things go the way I think they're going to go, you know? yeah, yeah. No, I think I think um, I've spoken about it with with this rebuild compared to the one we did in two thousand and what three, four, five, where we went and got 
Murphy, Gibbs, Cruiser, Judd the year after. So we've built the midfield and then, you know, the forwards and the backs, we didn't really draft for them. Whereas this time around, we went key position first, locked yep. them in. Now we've got, now we can just, because midfielders come and go every year. If it's That's not right. Dylan Shield, it's Adam Trelaw. If it's not Adam Trelaw, it's Zach Williams. If it's not Zach Williams, it's the next guy. So I, I, I like the fact that they've made a bit of a change up in the strategy. But, um, I mean, we're, we're filming this end of 2020. Finals have just started. And, you know, we've just watched Collingwood and West Coast, for example. And you see the level that they rise to. And I just, look, and our boys are a lot less experienced than, than those clubs. But the, the, the ability to actually find something that you didn't know was there and, and go to that level where I don't know how, I, I think we're a while away from that. We are a while away, and even if we pick up good this year like this, you know, Williams looks like he's coming over, so that looks good. And I don't think we should go hard with Saad. We need definitely that line breaker there. And I definitely another midfielder. So this Merritt maybe is a good, you know, get a double deal there with Vezinam or, or go somewhere like Oliver and that, you know. And I would go somewhere like Viney, someone tough man, try to get him in there, someone who would like you know, knock over his grandma to get the ball. You know, you need that kind of player. But you're right, when I watched Brisbane, even Brisbane, like Brisbane were, we, were where we were only a few years ago. And they I reckon we were in front of them to tell you the truth. Yeah. And we've just gone behind them now. Like, and but what I see from them, yeah, they recruit, and they did recruit well. They were smart, man. They got like, you know, uh, Neil and, and Cameron, you know, these players here that decided to come over. Like, I don't understand why they decided to go to Brisbane. I, I'd like to know that. But they did. But when I watched them on the weekend, man, they got this hardness about them. Like, they are tough, man. Like, and it was relentless, you know. And Richmond come hard at them and they just – and then they got that class. I don't think we've got that. If we're going to compete with that, I'm telling you, we're not, we're not going anywhere, man. So this is the standard, man. I'll be looking at that going, mate. And I don't get it. Like, our players, I'll be looking at them going, why are they any better than you? Like, I don't understand why you, why they're better than you. What did they do? Like, yeah, there's a little bit of class with Cameron and all that, but why is Neil so much better? Why is he getting so many possessions? You know what I mean? Why aren't you getting that many possessions, you know? So I reckon there's a mindset there. They just, I don't know, I mean, I don't reckon they think they can do it. Yet, you know? Like, you can see, like, in prison, you see the way they get the ball in. They're moving. They're running forward, man. They're waiting for the ball because they know that the next player is going to get it and they're just they're just next in line, you know, and they're tough. People like Mitch Robinson, you know, what a mistake getting into that bloke, you know. That was all Malthouse. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Talk to yeah. me about – talk to me. I just want, I want to get your thoughts on the Malthouse Ratton era. It was a disgrace, man. It was a, it was a bloody disgrace. So, oh, man, to tell you the truth, like – you say that we haven't had success, and we haven't really had success as far as our premiership, but there was a period there, you know. So we go like 95, then 99 preliminary, man. That was like, that was the game, man. Like I was there, man, I got drunk, you know, and then out, you know what happened there? Outside, the Essendon faithful, they were lining up the week before trying to get tickets, so they put all their chairs out there, and after we won, you know, like, I was grabbing their chairs. I was throwing them down the down the thing. I go go home, mate. Where are you going next week? You know, so I love it, you know. But it came to two thousand. Um, I think uh, we had some bad time two thousand and three and that, and that's when the pagan era and that come along, and then we lost all that draft picks. So we started going downhill from there. You know what I mean? But then we got back, you know. And we had a good period between. Like nine and thirteen and fourteen, you know what I mean? We made finals three years in here. All right, one that you know, the S and the S and Chiefs, you know, like they lost their spot and we got it. But that was our best win against uh against the Tigers, man. Like, man, 30, 30 something points down and we come back to win, you know. And Geigen, huh? Geigen was eating pies before the game, man. He kicks four goals, man. It was the best, man. I my rich from mate going, who is this bloke? I got that's Geigen, mate. It's dying, you know? but then they, you know, like we had a good little period, and then they got rid of rats. And you know, the year they got rid of him, it was eleven. He's won eleven games. 
but they just wanted, they thought they were better than what they were and they just wanted malt house. They sacked him and it just went downhill from there. Like, and I got sucked in too. Don't get me wrong. I'm there going, yeah, malt house, oh, he's like a premiership coach. He's going to do all the right things and that. He should never have come back. And, and he really did set our club back a few years, I reckon. He, you know, got rid of Eddie Betts and other players, Mitch, you know. Yeah, no, it wasn't a good time. We really, we really suffered. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember very clearly Ratton was getting – I mean, we, we, we were doing the whole Carlton premierships or nothing type mentality. And, you know, um, I remember the, the criticism for Ratton was, oh, you know, he doesn't have a plan B and when things don't go his way. Blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, history will now tell us, well, if we had have done what Richmond, Geelong, Collingwood did with their coaches and just held on. It would have been different. And you've got to remember, we made finals in 2009, 2010, 2011, right? And, all right, we lost, I think we lost to Brisbane in 2009 and then, thing, you know, we lost finals. But we did win, I think, against Essendon. Yep. In 2011, we might have won, yeah. So we played finals. We got jugged, you know, and everything was looking good at 11-11 in 2012, man. And then they sacked him, and it was really, uh, it was heart-wrenching. It's a favourite son, man, and he was doing a good job, man, and they loved him, man. I remember once in one game, I can't remember what it was, he was in the coach and we kicked the goal, and he went, go Blues, you know. He went, the coach goes, go Blues. He didn't yeah. go, go. He went go blues, mate, because it was it was him, you know. Yeah, and it was quite embarrassing the way yeah. they got. You know? No, it was it was a, it was a sad way to end. But the the amazing thing about Rats is, no matter how bad it actually was, he always handled it with class. He was mate, just, oh. it, the last game he came back and coached. Man, he did the press conference. You know what I mean? Imagine how embarrassing. You know, Sticks was standing next to him. I reckon Sticks didn't want to get rid of him either, you know. And, and then they had it. They already knew they were getting malt house. They did the whole thing. No, no. It was bad, man. And I'm kind of happy, you know. Like, I'm never happy for another team. But it's good to see Rats win that first final, you know. So, yeah, man. Yeah. And it's in 95. That bloke was a gun player too, everyone. But I don't think people forget. Man, you know, in 1995, how good was our side? I, you don't remember, but I'm telling you. Our side, we had Greg Williams, Stick Sauce, we had them all, yeah? He wins the best and fairest in the premiership year, man. Like, that bloke had, I think until recently, had, like, the most clearances or something out of the centre. You know, the bloke was a gun, man. He was a machine, you know, so. Yeah. When you watch the group we have right now, which of the players do you look at and you think, He's got that potential to be one of these Carlton champions that you talk about. So, if you talk about the obvious, you know, like Fritz still, I think, is going to be like, could be a champ, you know, definitely Walsh. You know, he looks like he's going to be a captain. And well, Weedery, you know, all these ones. Uh, Doherty, I think, will be a good player. And I think Kerno is going to be a star. I think Kerno is going to be a star, man. He's just got that X factor about him, you know, man. Oh, I get excited with Kerno, you know. So, yeah, I think Kerno might be the star. As far as the other midfielders and that, like, and even the others, man, there's not too many that you can see have been great. But winning a premiership will change all that, you know. All of yeah. a sudden, it's a nature to, to great stars of that, man. Like, there's been some shitty people winning grand finals and have a premiership of that in around them, you know, but I think those main, like the ones I described at the start, you know, like your, your two back, the two middles and the two the two forwards, the ones I, I said before, I think they're the ones that can be elevated to be champions, yeah? Gotcha. So we've got to build around them, I think. You definitely have to build around them. Yeah. So um, before I let you go, I want to ask you one question. Everyone gets the question at the end of these episodes. Uh when are we lifting up the next premiership? Look, re realistically, I reckon it's still going to be three or four years if lucky, if things go well, realistically. But you've got to look realistically, man. And things can change, of course. You see Brisbane, you see like other teams can lift. Are we going to be the team next year that lifts? You know, with getting these, if we can get these players, especially the way Tommy's been 
doing these drafts. I like him, and he's got these ideas, and I like it. So I reckon we could we could elevate, but then going to going to like top eight and then moving into contention is another story, you know. Are they going to have that guts? Are they going to have that determination to do it? But if any, if everything goes well, they develop properly, you know, three or four years, I reckon. All right. But hope for next year, man. I'm still going to have Of course. Years. Of course. So 20, roughly 2024, 2025, you and I having beers after the granny, after the siren. Yeah. Beers and, and you reckon that Richmond, like, they they uh, they went wild in Church Street. Wait right? till we see you do the Ligon Street. Mate. Wait till we see you. Mate, on the 95 grand final, oh, my God, like, I remember that, man. And then after the game, we we all, um, we all I went home. I remember filling up two, two litre bottles of Coke with scotch. And we just went to the Princess Park and we just sat there and all the boys come and we just got, like, we got home like eight in the morning, you know, and they were selling the videos already there. So I'm, I'm stumbling out with the video, you know, coming home, man, like seven in the morning and put the video in. Like those days it was the video and I uh, watched the game, but we went back. We The next day we went back to Princess Park and then on the Monday we went to the, you know, Percy's Bar in Carlton. Yep. And we party there for Monday. I think we went for all week, man. Oh, it's going to be good, man. It's going to be good. No, I'm looking forward to it, mate. I really am. Um, listen, it's been great. It's been great chatting with you. Appreciate your time. And, mate, it's been great to meet you this year. And I look forward to seeing you in the flesh next year. Yeah, 100%, man. We'll be there. We'll have a few beers, man. And I'm telling you, good times are coming. Good times are coming. Good on you, mate. Go the baggers. Go the blues. Go the blues.